Hey there, I'm Colin, and it's been a little while since I've made a video. My last video was actually posted on May 25th of this year, which is the day that George Floyd was murdered. And like many of you, I didn't really feel like doing a bunch of creative projects, and I was taking a lot of time to read and learn. And, you know, I just felt like my voice didn't need to be out there and people didn't need to hear from me. But I, you know, have come to realize like my silence in this area and my lack of action isn't great and isn't the way I want to move forward. So I want to take today to share with you some of the things I've been learning and I would love the opportunity to learn from what you've been up to. It's so like many other niche topics in the United States, the food arena historically has been one where black folks' contributions have been stolen and then the credit has been erased. And so I want to do the work to unpack and learn about where some of these things that are cultural phenomenons in the U.S. came from, and I want to learn where credit is due. So even as I look at my own bookshelf, most of my books are coming from like a European or Asian perspective. I don't have a ton of stuff outside of that super small niche. Now this may be for a lot of different reasons other than just my own ignorance, but I do want to push myself. I want to go beyond it. I want to learn where a lot of the food stuff comes from the U.S. that I might not have known its true origins. And I want to learn about other cultures that make super awesome, tasty stuff. I'm always down to try something new. Yeah, like I'm even making my own soy sauce. I'm making all the gear to do that. And yet I was in Charleston, South Carolina a couple years ago, and the only restaurants we really went to were by famous white chefs that I had seen on TV. And I missed out on a whole wide range of food by black owned restaurants down there. So I'm gonna have to redo my Charleston trip so that way I can experience a whole bunch of different stuff that I even get to try. And yeah, it's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it on TV. So I didn't know about it, but I didn't seek it out because I was like stuck in that one lane. And so, yeah, I wanna break out of that lane. So this summer I've been reading books and watching TV shows, listening to podcasts, and learning about some of the amazing contributions by wildly talented black folks here in the United States. And so I wanna quickly share a few of those with you. Um, and maybe there'll be things that are interesting on your journey. So the Jemima Code is an awesome place to start. It's all about giving credit where credit is due to the contributions of black cooks and cookbook authors throughout the history of the United States. They go into a lot of the ways that black voices were um, erased or silenced in the cooking world. And yeah, it's, this was very eye-opening. And then it was really interesting to see all the different cookbooks that they've chronicled in here. So this isn't really about recipes. This book is more about uh, an understanding of the nature surrounding the history of black cooking in the United States. And then it's a collection of different cookbooks and a little bit of notes about all these cookbooks. So um, some of these cookbooks are actually held in some libraries. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get some of them and try some really old recipes. I think that'd be really fun. So this was an awesome book and I really enjoyed reading it. So Notes from a Young Black Chef is a fairly new book. I think it's only like a year or two old, um, but it's an autobiography by Kwame Anwachi. And it feels like you're watching an episode of Chef's Table where you really get a deep dive on not only someone's um, past and their failures and the things that they've learned along the way, but also some of their cooking philosophy and things like that. It's highly narrative based, super well written. And there's some recipes sprinkled throughout that um, I still haven't tried yet because I read this last year, but I'm gonna have to make one of these on the channel. I thought that almost all the recipes sounded like, oh yeah, gonna have to do that. So Between Harlem and Heaven was a fascinating read for me because as a person who's really into Asian food, I'm seeing a lot of really familiar seasonings and spices and um, dishes for that matter, but with a twist on them. So uh, what these authors point out is that as you trace immigration and the spice trades and things like that, a lot of African cultures kind of um, crossed paths with Asian cultures. And there's a lot of similarities between like West African food and Asian food and rice and fish diets and things like that. So um, this book is a real 
bona fide cookbook. And it, unlike some of the other ones I started with, this is, here's a cookbook. Uh, these recipes look super interesting, very flavorful. I am so excited to really make some of these. I read all these books, but I haven't had a chance to cook any of this food. Since quarantine started, I haven't really been cooking all that much. Even if you look at my Instagram, I think like I made a steak that was worthy of posting about. But other than that, we've been getting by. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, today marks like a new moment for me where I'm getting back into food. I'm getting back into making stuff. I'm getting back into making food on this channel. And the next thing I make has got to be from one of these books. So after I read this book, I realized like I had believed some stereotypical lies about what exactly soul food was. And it was a very narrow niche of dishes that, oh, that's soul food. But oh my goodness, the recipes and the ingredients and the ideas in here are wild. And I know a lot of that is Todd Richards is super talented and I can tell by looking at these. But yeah, this book was an amazing, fascinating read. I really like what he did with creating menus. So sometimes you go through a cookbook and you're like, what's going to go together? He created these menus in here. And what's really interesting is that he's even got like some playlist suggestions and drink pairings. So I want to challenge myself to make a dinner party out of one of his menus. And he's got kind of a really challenging one towards the back that's like a chef's table kind of idea. And I don't even know if I can source the ingredients because there's sea urchin as kind of like the main uh, <laughs> big ingredient in there. And so, yeah, I really want to try that out and see if I can even find that stuff. I'm in Michigan, so some of that may be tricky, but yeah, this book is awesome. And another interesting thing is the forward was written by Sean Brock and that's a white Southern chef who had always followed. And I didn't know um, some of the people that he had learned from and gleaned information from and was uh, a chef that was also coming up around the same time as him who was doing really interesting stuff. So there's some interesting crossover there for me. Um, yeah, again, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try to make one of his menus for the channel. Um, and I'm gonna be cooking out of this book. And some of this stuff isn't even, um, super challenging or out there. Some of it's just like, uh, he's got like a blueberry sweet tea recipe that I'm gonna have to try. And that could be like a weekly thing that I make, or, you know, there's a lot of other, in all of these books, what I was really fascinated by was how challenging and interesting and fascinating some of the flavors were, but how just simple of ingredients and how easy these things were gonna be to prepare. So I'm excited to introduce some new staples to my family. Now for a chef's table episode that you should really watch that kind of deals with this whole topic in a really great way is uh, Mashama Bailey on Chef's Table. She actually owns a restaurant that is in an old bus stop that used to be segregated. So that's a pretty interesting circle there of a story about what's going on in that place and how um, she's making things different in her own community. So. That one was in the food that she makes looks unbelievable. So that restaurant is now on my bucket list. Gotta go there. Um, I might make a special trip just to go to that restaurant. It might be a quick weekend trip or something like that, but I think it'll be great. All right, so this is just a little bit of what I've been learning about and getting excited about. Um, I would really love to know what are who are black cooks or authors or food writers or Instagram pages that I need to be looking at? Who, who do I need to be learning from that are people that are right here in my own country that are doing stuff that I'm not that familiar with? So leave a comment down below and let me know uh, what I need to be digging into. Also, if you're familiar with any of these books and there's a recipe that you're like, yeah, you gotta try that one, that's killer, let me know. I'd love to know uh, what you think you'd like to see here on this channel, um, and especially with um, some of these recipes and or other food things that I really need to learn. Okay, so I know I've been promising you for a long time that I'm gonna show you the grinder that I've been working on for making soy sauce and it's done and the video is like halfway edited. So I'm gonna release that out next week. So get excited for that. And then all I have to do is start making soy sauce. So um, I'm probably gonna do a recipe from one of these books before I do the soy sauce, um, but I've got some stuff planned. I got videos I'm gonna be doing once a week now again. I'm really excited to get back into 
just pushing forward and doing a lot of learning and growing and challenging myself. Um, you know, I think it's the best way to learn anything is by like getting your hands dirty and making things. And it brings me so much joy to go through the extra work of <laughs> failing and trying again and reiterating and learning how to do something. And that's the way that you really, truly get to learn and know something well. So uh, that's kind of the season of life I'm in right now is just a lot of challenges ahead. And I'm really excited and I hope you'll join me as I share those with you. So until next time, cheers. Oh,